concerned should be like that, and the prayer of the faith was here. So I do this bit, and then you do all those, and then that's me. Okay. Okay? Fantastic. So I'll leave that and there. And just after your homily, I'll come up. And yeah, I'll just say I'll stand out for our universal prayer. Fantastic. Okay? Thank you. Is that a good time? Yeah, Sorry. it'll be fine. Yeah, oh. great. I'll just have a quick read through this and make yeah, sure that I'm okay. okay.
morning. My uh, name is Robert Borg. I'm the uh, Dean of the Cathedral. And uh, before we begin our Mass this morning, Monica is going to lead us in some words of remembrance. And then uh, we will pray for her during this time. It's not easy for her, I'm sure. And we will ask the Lord to give her the strength she needs. Okay. The Matt that I knew was an extremely intelligent, artistic and passionate man. He had a compassionate and gentle heart and loved animals and people alike. Someone said that Matt loved much and hurt deeply. As my brother, Matt also had the unfailing knack of being both lovable and annoying. It's not that Matt pushed boundaries as such. He sincerely didn't know or often remember where they were. And if he did, he often didn't see their importance. For instance, one friend recounted how he would call, not during the day, but at 3 a.m., leaving a protracted voicemail message on a mobile phone, and for good measure, repeating it on the home phone as well. However, he never ended a call or a message without saying, I love you. We would always go on holidays together as a family when younger to a place called Darris near the bush and the beach, a place that I know Matt always loved. We had many fun times together there with family and friends. Since then, until now, we always stayed in touch. We gathered for family celebrations, birthdays, Easter and Christmas, dinners, movies, and anything needed in between. We would greet and say goodbye to each other, always with a big hug. The last several years, people would see him coming by the presence of his beloved dog, Missy, an abandoned dog he rescued and who went everywhere with him off the lead. Matt would always claim with a straight face that she was perfectly house trained and never got lost, even when it was obviously the otherwise. There are only a few times I can remember when he did not have an animal in his life. They say the way a person treats an animal says a lot about a person. Many of Matt's friends have also told us that he often gave them a lift, looked out for their welfare, gave positive words of encouragement when feeling blue, support when they were sick, a roof to live under and a feed when they really had nowhere and no, nobody else to go to. Matt extended this to people he'd never met by regularly collecting leftover bread from a bakery and taking it to a warehouse to feed the homeless and to keep them company. Matt was also a political activist who wanted to change the world, to make it a better place so that everyone could live in peace. And he did this proudly with his work with anonymous and wave of action groups. Some of his good friends have told us just how much he loved this part of his life, as now he was finally able to be involved in making a real difference. One of his only two fridge magnets captures something of his ideals recently. One kind deed a year already changes your life, let alone one kind deed every day. That's not to say that Matt was perfect. Matt also spent much of his earlier life struggling, and I would say he only really blossomed the last few years with his cancer being a real turning point. Like me, Matt was adopted, but he felt it as he was always searching for a place to fit in, and so he had trouble always settling down. Matt always had a fierce sense of adventure that sometimes also led him into trouble. As a boy, he thought he could fly like Superman, and he leapt off the back veranda, thankfully into a soft vegetable patch. As an adult, that spirit of no boundaries continued um, in many different ways. A man who loved to party, but who had more accidents and near misses than I can count. Matt would sometimes proudly show off his scars, and no one could come close to matching what he'd been through, but I wouldn't recommend it. Matt also had a long battle with leukaemia, and combined with so many other hospital visits, we often joked about how she'd ha he should have his own frequent flyer card, or at least get a free T-shirt. Several people have said, that given all that, Matt just seemed invincible. This fitted perfectly with his love of the phoenix, a mythical bird that always rises to life again from the ashes. And so he loved to call himself Phoenix with an F. Matt appropriately drew an image of the phoenix during his time at hospital. And it's over there um, on the side. Even as a boy, Matt just had those kind of bones that could break easily. This was more so after his treatment for cancer. And he ended up having three hip replacements which is unusual for a man his age. Um, all that was a tough struggle for him and for us. But Matt recovered from that and had beaten cancer too. Six years in remission, just, seven, uh, just last month, and seven since being diagnosed. Like all other areas of his life, even there he befriended many people, 
patients and staff alike, many of which continue to be lifelong friends. The benefits of his adventurous streak were brought to bear in his early adult years with the joy of riding his motorbike, which he was thrilled to share with our granddad. But try as he might, granddad just couldn't sit on it. Matt could no longer ride much after his chemotherapy, and I can't remember his last ride. But we still have his bike in the garage. For Matt, another joy of years gone by was by being an urban explorer. Matt travelled and explored the drains and waterways of Sydney and many abandoned industrial factories with his dog and others, others interested in such adventures. Matt captures some of this artistically with a camera, with many printed and framed around his house. One of his talents, though, through, throughout all the ups and downs, was Matt's extraordinary social spark, that ability to make friends from all walks of life, no matter where he went. Thank you for being a part of his life, sharing yours with him, and giving him the friends he needed on his journey with us. I've only looked through a few of Matt's papers, but there was one I found particularly appropriate. It was a certificate awarded to Matt for, quote, making us wait. <laughs> Anyone who has known Matt knows that he will probably be late, but that's Matt, often so much to do, so many people to meet up with, always rushing everywhere and often being just full of surprises. Throughout his life, Matt often had trouble sleeping, so when he slept, he really slept for days not to mention that anything that could crop up on the way to somewhere usually did. I asked him what he had to do before coming to our parents for dinner once, and he described a car journey, nothing like a straight line between A and B, but one, but one more like a never-ending zigzag to all corners of Sydney and beyond. That was normal for Matt, though, wanting to do it all and being late, but still making it, and that's what was important. The last time we spoke, about a week before he died, Matt came over for dinner at our family home, as he regularly did. As he had been doing the last year or so, Matt spoke to us of the, world, the world's problems again, and I mean all of them. Various companies being reckless, the decreasing bee population, the inequalities between the rich and the poor, among many other things. I'm sure many of you will be familiar with how passionate and single-minded Matt could be. I believe the WikiLeaks party attributed the above average results for one of their polling booths in Chatswood down to Matt's relentless persuasive ability and enthusiasm. During this dinner, I remember his vexed reaction when I finally got a word in to say that I just wasn't interested. I'd heard it all before and I was tired. I reminded him that it's not that I don't care, but that those things weren't about him and that I wanted to hear how his week had been, how he was feeling and how he was going in life. In all his struggles, this was a recurring message in Matt's life that our family tried to convey of being loved no matter what, and most importantly, of letting him know that he was loved. So Matt shifted the discussion excitedly and pulled out his invitation to his upcoming graduation for TAFE in web, web design. Matt was having a big dilemma of picking who to invite out of mum, dad and I, as he could only invite two of us. He just couldn't choose and he didn't want to disappoint anyone. Matt then revealed how excited he was about planning to celebrate his graduation with us as a family, getting to plan Mother's Day, his birthday in June, and then Mum's birthday in July. And then the big logistical question came up of just how to fit it in with everything else to do on his calendar. Matt had also been going to the gym lately, so he looked healthier than we have seen him in years. Just before he left, Matt proudly showed off his newfound physique with an appropriate pose, which all made us laugh. It was a very pr proud moment for us and for him. We said goodbye how our family usually does, a big hug, each saying I love you, and Matt letting me trace a cross on his forehead in blessing. We are all here to say goodbye to Matt, and I thank you all for joining us in this. Given his adventurous spirit, Matt was a seeker and a very spiritual person who had many discussions about it with family and friends. I ask you to pray for two intentions when you remember him. One, that Matt has found peace in his new journey and the second to thank God for the gift that Matt has been to each one of us in his life. Matt has moved on to the next adventure.
Just before we begin Mass, I'd ask if you have a mobile phone, could you please ensure that it's uh, turned off or placed on to vibrate? Thank you. Could you please stand for our entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Would you please be seated. First of all, I welcome you here today. I welcome particularly Barbara and Alan and Monica, your relatives and friends who have gathered to support you. The church gathers around you today uh, with our arms around you to give you that comfort and strength through the celebration of the Eucharist and the nourishment that we have on God's Word. To those who are watching us on the internet, we uh, pray with you today as you uh, experience this uh, ceremony with us. And even though you may be far away, you're very much close at hand through that electronic medium we have today. We begin our liturgy by recalling uh, Matthew's uh, day of reception into the church of his baptism. The various symbols are explained there in your order of service. In the waters of baptism, Matthew died to, eternal, to await eternal life. May Christ welcome him into his heavenly kingdom. On the day of his baptism, Matthew was clothed in Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed in eternal glory. On the day of his baptism, Matthew accepted Christ as the word of life. May Christ speak these words to him now. Come, you whom my Father has blessed, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Family, have a great trust in the rosary in this month of May as we pray the rosary each day. We pray also that Matthew will be received into the eternal care of our Heavenly Mother. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. As our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, may our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Matthew, also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We sit now as we're nourished on the Word of God. Okay. 
The first reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, but all of them in the, their proper order. Christ as the first fruits, and then, after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, Beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love, in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, 
When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, he will take his seat on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate men from one another as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to one of the least of these, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, Go away from me with your curse upon you, to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you never gave me food. I was thirsty, and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you never made me welcome. Naked, and you never clothed me. Sick and in prison, and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? Then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you ne neglected to, this, to, to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Monica and I had a discussion just before Mass. She said, couldn't we finish off the Gospel just at the good part? And uh, I said, no, because if our Lord only wanted to finish it off there, that's where he would have finished it. But he gave us two, the sheep and the goats. And it's important because both of them didn't realise what they did. They both had to ask, when did we see you hungry? Or then when did we neglect to see you hungry? Both had to ask the question of him. One did it because they did it out of their own love and charity, and the other did it because they were neglectful. They couldn't see past themselves. The Gospel was chosen very specifically today for Matthew because in his charity he saw the need to assist people that he gave. He fed the hungry. He looked after the stranger and so on. And we know that God looks upon those good things that we do he never turns us away, but looks deeper into our hearts than we can look into a person's life. The challenge for us today is to see why a young man was called so quickly into eternal life. Perhaps it's because he had already reached his perfection in this world of giving. We don't know. We can only speculate in one sense. But we know that he was made in God's image and likeness. He was transformed in the waters of baptism to become a child of God. We recalled that already. The Easter candle burning brightly here shows that his life was a light to other people, particularly to many of you today who knew him better than I did. All we know is that we can look upon this man and say he did good. And what he tried to do, he did out of the generosity of the love that he had for people. The first reading today spoke about Christ's resurrection. We're in the Easter season still, still a couple of more weeks to go, celebrating our Lord's death on the cross. And I could only associate his transfusions that he'd had many and many, I believe, over the years with the transfusion of the blood of Christ into his life. That came about in baptism as well, because baptism immerses us into the Lord's death and his resurrection, that the things that we may suffer in this world are raised up because we know our Saviour died on the cross. And the Easter candle reminds us that his death wasn't in vain, that his death for us is, gives us hope that we continue on our journey to the kingdom. Monica has spoken 
about that, about his journey through life. Today, we commend his soul to the Lord, that his journey will continue into eternal life, that he will reach the loving embrace of God, where the virtues will shine like the stars in heaven. We stand for our universal prayer. Let us come before our loving God who comforts us in our time of grief. For Matthew, a child of God, an heir to the kingdom, that he may be held securely in God's loving embrace, now and for all eternity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us, Matthew's family and friends, may be comforted in our grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God's faith, God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who bear the cross of pain in mind or body, may never feel forsaken by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayers, and at the hour of our death, welcome us into your kingdom, where Jesus is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We sit now as our gifts of bread and wine are brought to the altar. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Matthew, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Custom is to kneel for the Eucharistic prayer. If you're not able to, please feel free to sit. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In the mystery of faith, Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Matthew, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 <coughs> 
at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that in your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant, Matthew, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated. We come now to our final commendation and farewell from the Christian community. Also with the right of committal, Matthew uh, will be taken from here to the crematorium uh, to be cremated and after his uh, body has been cremated, the family will receive his ashes back and then we will sprinkle his ashes in the various places where they're going to go or to bury him wherever they desire. Uh, so everything will be finished here and then we'll farewell him on his last journey. After Mass, you're welcome to go to the uh, RSL uh, for refreshments and I'd ask you if you are a smoker that there is no smoking in the cathedral precinct. If you need to have a cigarette, you need to go down to the street outside the cathedral boundaries. It's uh, all those new laws we have to abide by today. The only thing we can smoke at the moment is still incense, which is what we're going to use. Incense is the sign of honouring uh, Matthew's body, the temple of the Holy Spirit, through baptism. And as the incense rises, so does our song of farewell that I'd ask you to join in with me to your best of your ability. As we gather to commend our brother Matthew to God our Father and commit his body to the elements, let us express in song and prayer our common faith in the resurrection. As Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, we too are called to follow him through death to the glory where God will be all in all. We read in sacred scripture, It is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me and that I should raise it up on the last day. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in you we place our trust and hope. In you, the dead whose bodies were temples of the Spirit, find everlasting peace. As we take leave of our brother, give our hearts peace in the firm hope that one day Matthew will live in the mansion you have prepared for him in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Matthew, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Matthew again and enjoy his friendship. Although we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. We pray in silence now for our own intentions. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Come to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Give him eternal rest, O Lord, and may your light shine on him forever. Receive his soul and present him 
to God the Most High. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Matthew in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Matthew in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Matthew forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.